Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, however you might be celebrating. We are glad to be with all of you, and thanks for spending some time with us. And who else would you rather spend your time with around the holiday season than one Jeff Goodman, <laughs> than one Terrence Oglesby, and then one John Henson? You know, Jeff, a lot of people joke, you, you, you've obviously got a large presence in the college basketball media space. But before we get to our game, which we're going to break down, folks, 16 teams in four minutes apiece, and what gift we would give them for Christmas – Jeff, I'm going to start by saying you have an opportunity to give College Basketball Nation a holiday message because I think some fan bases think you have a heart two sizes too small, like the Grinch, but I think you're <laughs> going to come down here and give us a message. Yeah, I, I'm not the Grinch. I'm actually very positive. I just want good games. That's all I want for college basketball is good games from the start of the season in November. We got it, you know, coming up after finals here uh, and, and after the new year. We're going to have them every single day. It's going to be terrific. The only other thing I ask, here's the, the Grinch in me, final fours only in warm weather cities. <laughs> Period. Period. <laughs> Detroit, yeah. no. Minneapolis, no. I, I live in Boston. I want to get somewhere warm for the final four. I'm with Just this. put it in warm weather cities. Yeah, I'm with this. I haven't been to many Final Fours, but I went to Minneapolis a few years ago. I think the year before COVID. It was miserable, man. Miserable. It was so cold. What are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> you, just, oh, you just needed to be able to – I would just be able to walk outside and hang out. Nobody wants to have to throw in a coat and be bundled <laughs> up. And, you know, like, you know, it's, it's, it's a Nothing championship. It's the city. It's not, I'll, Listen, I'm good with Detroit in, like, July. I'm great with <laughs> Minneapolis in, like, May or June. But no, not April 1st. I don't want to be there, either of those cities. I, I'd, I'd be okay with New Orleans every year. Yeah, New that Orleans, it was hey, We've added Vegas to the equation. I know. I'm good with that. I'm good Vegas. with that. It was the visual in New Orleans last year where you could walk around the streets and you could walk into Mother's, which is known for their po' boys in New Orleans. Roy Williams had a sandwich there every single day, John Henson. Every, he was hanging out holding court. Roy, you know, he, he likes to hang out. He likes he likes good food and he likes good uh you know good craps tables. He had both in New Orleans. Yes, so he was living life. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Merry Christmas, everybody. And for Christmas, we're gonna hand out gifts. We've got 16 teams. Dagan Hughes, our producer, is going to put four minutes on the clock. Each panel member gets roughly a minute. To break down a team, I will be the judge of that. And we're going to get started right away. And we're going to get started with the team coming into the season that I would say everybody was most fascinated to watch because of the fact that they had a new leader on the sidelines for the first time in four decades. That's the Duke Blue Devils. We will start with Terrence Oglesby. Terrence, what does Duke need for Christmas? I'm going to be honest with you. I think John Shire needs a bigger office. Like, he deserves a bigger <laughs> office. He is now the head coach at Duke University. And John Henson hates them probably more than I do. But let me say yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He, he deserves it. And he's done a pretty good job through the first part of this season. I, I really like John, but you got to get him out of that closet as, of an assistant coach's office. We got to get we got to get my man living at a higher level. At least get him a couch in there where guys can come and hang out with him. He's still got his whole floor. He's got he's got the whole floor, and poor Shire's stuck in a little, basically like a, a little closet down the end. They got my man Shire. He's the head coach at Duke, and he's in a cubicle. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, hey, look, Coach K probably still has a you know he's got to keep his keep whole court down there, man. So you know Shire's got to do something to get that big office down there, man. That's, That's how right. those dukes work, man. That's how those Dukey guys work. And Sin, what gift are you handing out? You know what? I'm going to go a little. I'm going to go. We need to give out the gift of more lively and whitehead minutes. I mean, they're averaging 16 and 17. Lively's averaging 17 minutes. Whitehead's averaging 16 minutes. They're finally starting. Whitehead had 15 last game. So, like, if I could give them a gift, I would give more minutes to the young boys because they need them to be the best team that they could possibly be. And um, I think they're on track. They're starting now. So, we'll see if that stays. Yeah, my, my gift is giving the ball to Derek Whitehead. Give him the basketball and just say, go make plays. We don't care if you screw up. We're just going to hand you the ball. 
and play 30 minutes because we know that's the only way we're going to get a chance to go to the Final Four and maybe win a national. I mean, imagine if John Shire ever got to the Final Four in his first year as head coach. It's not out of the question now, as we've seen this team kind of their talent. No question about it. And I think John Shire knows, because he said it publicly, that Dariq Whitehead needs to be the guy that swings them. He is that pendulum player that can get them into a different gear. So that's that's the gift that we all, I think, could come to a consensus on. What I would say is you could tell that they're trying to get Tyrese Proctor into that dead-eye shooter, the catch-and-shoot guy that can make things happen on the perimeter. We've seen glimpses of it. But overall, he's 24% from three on the season. So it's Proctor and others so that when Jeremy Roach is on the attack, and now teams teams have to be – He's so aware of Roach because he is that guy for Duke that when they collapse, does Duke have reliable shot making night in, night out? If they have that with their length package together, T.O., as I think we have about a minute 15, then Duke could go to the Final Four. Well, you can add on some minutes for Dariq Whitehead, what Henson was talking about, right? You add more minutes, guys get more comfortable. Same can be (laughs) said for Tyrese Proctor. All those guys playing together, shot making is contagious. I feel like we say it all the time. Like, if one guy starts going and he feels comfortable, then other guys are going to follow suit. Jeremy Roach has been the guy for Duke. He could still get where he wants with the basketball, spraying out to guys where they know they're going to get the ball and just getting more comfortable within the flow of the game is only going to help things. I have to beat these guys early. I think um, with the guys, you know, right head and lively kind of starting to get more minutes and the team starting to gel because they didn't play with them in the preseason, they're going to be tough to beat down the stretch later in the season. So, you know, these teams in ACC better get, you know, kind of get on them early because I think towards the end of the year, they're going to they're gonna be picking up. Jeff, we have 10 seconds, basically. We will see Coach K. We will see Coach K at a Duke game when? Never. Not this year. Not this year. Not even Final Four if they made it? No, not this year. Team number two, the North Carolina Tar Heels. John Henson, start us off. I would like to get them a Dr. Dish, more Dr. Dish shooting guns because <laughs> they're shooting 30% from three. That's 316th in the land. I think that's more of a kind of indictment on the quality than the quantity of the shooting style. But you know what? I don't care what you say. They got to make shots. We're going to get them a doc. We're going to get them more Dr. Dish. We're going to get the ones with the UNC on the side. And we're going to, you know, because when I was playing, you know, even Terrence, I think you had to put the, um, the thing on the rim. Nowadays, you could just kind of set it up, and it sh- kind of shows you the. They shot. don't have the laser anymore. They, they, they I think they got it. I, I don't know. I, I know the new ones are, they're pretty kind of advanced. But yeah, I'm gonna get them a doctor dish shooting gun. They need to shoot the ball better. That's all I got for you for that one. <laughs> I, I think more than anything, it's shot selection for the Tar Heels, yeah. Yeah. right? And they have guys who can knock down shots. They just haven't been moving it very well. And for that reason and that reason alone, I've gotten the North Carolina Tar Heels a hot potato timer, because (laughs) if they don't hold on to it for more than three or four dribbles, like this Carolina team starts moving it, they can be really good because that means Caleb loves attacking on the second and third side of the offense. That means he's, he's going against closeouts that changes how he plays. That's huge. And scheduling. So important guys. I mean, we know it. They lose four in a row. They play Georgia tech. Who's not great this year. I'm not hiding anything. They play against the Citadel. The good thing about playing their schedule with those four tough losses is it expedites your learning curve because you know what your problems are. Right. They were able to work on those problems against Georgia Tech and Citadel. 24 assists against the Citadel heading into that Ohio State game, and then they go into a neutral side and win one. They're starting to move the ball. They're starting to learn that that second side is more valuable to Caleb Love. Armando Baycott being the fo- focus is more valuable to Caleb Love, and all that entire team starting to play better as a result and their freshmen are starting to set in right. to, to their roles, and now they're providing energy off the bench. I like Carolina moving forward because they're starting to figure it out. I'm going to give them some Red Bull because I, I think they need energy. I think they need energy on the court. I, I think they need to play with some, some intensity a little bit. Like I was going to give them like date nights because I think they need to hang around each other and, and look more like connected. But last year – The biggest thing for them that flipped was, right, they liked playing with each other, and you could see it on their faces March 5th, post-March 5th. 
And mm. I think they've reverted back to where now they're not playing with emotion. They're not playing with a lot of intensity. Um, so maybe Red Bull will get them going pregame, give each one of them one Red Bull, and maybe they come out there, you know, excited because that's what I want to see the excited North Carolina Tar, Tar Heels. I thought Tyler Nickel and Seth Trimble were able to maybe not be Red Bull but inject a little bit of energy because they're diving on the floor. They're getting out of the passing lanes or at least deflecting some basketballs. They, they do need energy, but I think moving the ball kind of some energy giving behaviors, like moving the basketball, quick cuts, getting out of passing lanes, which is what the Carolina teams I played against right. were always so good at, like get back to those energy giving behaviors that Carolina has done for so long. They need to get back to that. They do. And, and I, I, I would like for them to run even more. I, I just remember when I was playing, man, like, I mean, literally you would hear the, every possession in the back of your head, run! Like, Coach Wilson yeah. was literally yelling that. So, like, I, I would like to see them run a little more. I think they have the athletes. Baco's obviously a little slower. But I think with those guards, man, you got to push it. And, and and so that's, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. But I was going to wrap Baycott, up a little patient. Hey, hey, Baycott and Psycho T in a race. Who wins? Psycho T by a mile. All oh, right, man. All right. You know the invisible fences for dogs? Yeah. I would give R.J. Davis and Caleb Love a buzzer they wear on their ankle. If you don't give Armando Baycott the ball, it goes off. Do so you would just zap them? Yeah. I respect that. Like, give I the respect big man, give this the is a no-nonsense policy. I'll give like the it. big man the ball. For heaven's sake, give the big man the ball. Let's turn to the final team in the ACC. Now, this list was made by Mr. Goodman, so I'm very <laughs> curious because – to me, this is the house that Santa goes down into and looks around and goes, oh, I didn't know it was this bad. <laughs> I mean, it, I, might have, I might have to give him a couple extra because this is they – they have, they have cookie scraps. It's Louisville, Jeff. So I, I'm giving uh, Louisville – um, a login to the transfer portal because I don't think they had it last year. I think they Ooh. had the wrong login. Ooh. I think they had the wrong password or something that Kenny Payne could not get the hell into the transfer portal because he didn't bring in anybody. So I'm going to give Kenny Payne the right password this year for the portal so he can get some dudes, right? Because right now they got nothing, especially in the backcourt. They got nothing. So he got locked out of the portal. So I'm going to give him the right password. Go ahead, John. I am going to give them an all-expense pay trip, vacation, <laughs> anywhere they want to go as a entire program. They need to sit around. They need to have dinners together. They need to go do some team-building activities. They need to do an escape room. They need to do something to build that chemistry. They need to escape out of this season. Yeah, they should <laughs> not be bad. I mean, they, they just want a <laughs> barn burner. <laughs> they just want a barn burner against FAMU by six. I mean, come on, guy. Like, this is more than basketball. I don't care what you say. We can call it portal. No, it's just they, they need to be a team. And Kenny Payne, and, and that's why I want to give him a vacation. Look, guys, go somewhere, hang out, and hey, get to know get to know your teammate, where he's from, what he likes to do. I don't think it matters, team. John. John, I got to yeah. say, no matter yeah. how well they know each other, I'm two, not sure it's going to matter. Two wins? Hey, chemistry can get you four out of – get you a couple more wins. I don't know. Can you play the point, John? Hey, I can't play the point, but you know what? We can have a point by committee. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. so. Everybody take a dribble and pass it. Like, exactly. like that, that's the biggest court. issue. Three hey, dribble that, max. Yeah, that's right. Three dribble yeah. max. Uh, you could give that to Carolina, too. But right. look at uh, – you look at the roster, it's just brutal. Uh, and it's not so much the talent because you look at their forwards, like they have pretty talented guys. Right. Like – Huntley Hatfield was a potential All-American if he doesn't reclass and go to Tennessee the first year. Jalen Withers was an All-ACC freshman, like, but he was playing the five. Now he's playing the two at times for Louisville. This is a poorly constructed roster. So I gave two teams a time machine, two teams. We'll, we'll talk about the other one later. This team I'm giving a time machine to the offseason so they can get some dudes on the roster. This, guy, this bunch of guys – they don't fit together very well. Kenny Payne's trying. He's trying to infiltrate his culture. He's trying to get all this stuff put in to the Louisville system. It's just they don't necessarily have the dudes to do it. Fabio Basile, like, he's not ready. They added a point guard late. He's not ready. Even he was a reclass guy. Like, Brandon Hunley Hatfield, he's a sophomore. He's really freshman age. Like Jalen Withers, he's a center slash four man who can step out a little bit. He's shooting the ball fine, 
but he functions better against opposing fives, opposing fours, and he's having to play against smaller, quicker guys, and it's tough. Give them a time machine. Move them to about March to where they can get in the portal, they can get some guards, and they can energize some of these forwards and where they can get back to their natural positions. All right, I got three gifts for Louisville. They deserve a lot of gifts because, frankly, they're in a bad way. Number one is the time machine so that we can take them back. Forget March. Forget <laughs> last March. Send them back to April 2013. And don't tell me it didn't count because that's a bunch of BS. Send them back to a Monday night in April 2013 when they won the national championship. <laughs> I don't care about vacated wins. We all know what, what Louisville fans would want, and we all know how, how much they love Rick Pitino. That's number one. Number two, you said you sent them on a trip, John. So after the Christmas break, I would send them on a trip to California where they could go hang out in the sun and enjoy it and then play Mark Fox in, U in California and get a win because the Bears haven't won a single game this season and Louisville could use some confidence there. Sorry, Cal. Facts are facts. You stink. And number three, what's the third thing I would give them? Oh, I'd give every Louisville fan just for men. Just for men hair color. Because Louisville like fans, Louisville fans have to be tearing their freaking hair out. Can you imagine the text threads that they're on with Kentucky fans? It's got a stink. It's Brutal. Got a stink. Brutal. Brutal. And in true Fanta Claus fashion, three gifts for the worst team. He's a giver. He's a oh, giver. How nice well, of you, man. All right. Let's switch to Indiana. The Hoosiers. Let's start with Terrence Oglesby. Terrence, what are you giving Indiana? The Hoosiers started out well, guys. I, I think we all need to do that. And what do they need more than anything? Indiana needs a refresh button. They've lost three out of their last four. Rutgers at the rack is an incredibly difficult place to play. Anywhere you play Arizona, it's going to be brutal, and you're just not going to win at Fog Out. You need the refresh button. Elon, Kennesaw State are next. I grant you your refresh button. And you're going to have to learn to play a little bit differently with the potential injury to their point guard. That could hurt you moving forward. But this is a team that needs to recalibrate a little bit. So I'm giving you the refresh button. I'm going to go with they need some ammonia smelling salts. Now hear me out. So when, when they played Arizona, Arizona jumped on them early. And, and it was kind of like tough for them to kind of recover. Kansas, 12-2, jumped on them early. So – I, when I, I remember when I used to play the Bulls in the Joe Kim Noah days, they would do these smelling sauce before the game. I need Indiana. I think Indiana needs that for them to be because because once you once a team like Kansas or Arizona jumps on you, it's pretty much over. So if they can get some ammonia smelling sauce, get going, get fired up early, maybe they'll have a chance. So Joe Kim Noah would do ammonia smelling salts before yes, every I mean, game. Yes. Listen, when they're the Thibodeau days, man, they would take the cup and hey, look, I I saw it. I said, what's I, I said, what are they doing? And, hey, and that's John, what they would do. John, could you give me a Christmas gift? What's that? Joe Kim Noah's number, because as a Clevelander, I'd like to call him. <laughs> really? <laughs> Listen, man, me and Joe Kim are, are, you know, me and Joe Kim had a lot of battles be being in Milwaukee and kind of being the, the bad stepchild. So, uh, you know, I'll definitely give him your number. We could both call him, actually. He called my city a mistake. Go ahead, Jeff. <laughs> it wasn't just Joe Kim Noah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> uh, I, I got two. I got two for Indiana. One, I need more tweets from Maria Woodson. <laughs> number one. And if you missed it, Maria Woodson is Mike Woodson's daughter. And I'm going to read it to you quickly here because she responded to one uh, Dan uh, jo da Dockich. I was going to say Jockich, but I didn't. Um, <laughs> Dockich <laughs> said, uh, it's time for Woodson to stop with the three naps a day. Stop with the constant watching of CNN. Stop with saunas. And coach actually put time in coaching the team offensively and defensively. Whitman, meaning Randy Whitman, is supposedly a paid advisor. What's he do? What do these guys coach? So Maria Woodson responds, LOL, oh, shut up. It's time for you to get a life. You have way too much time in your hands. Why don't you put time uh, in finding a hobby, you miserable prick? Ooh. I love Maria Woodson. That's spicy. That's, spicy. that's spicy. We need Ooh. more from Maria Woodson. She came uh, with all fact, the heat, didn't she? Maybe we can get her on After Dark. Listen. I would love to have Maria Woodson on After Dark. So that's my funny one, tongue-in-cheek a little bit. Uh, the serious one is perimeter shooting. Uh, with Xavier Johnson hurt, 
they didn't have perimeter shooting to begin with. They had Miller, Cop, and Xavier Johnson. I know Race Thompson's made a few here and there, but uh, I don't want him shooting threes. So now it's all on, on Miller. So, I, yeah, I, I think perimeter shooting is the easy one for Indiana. Mike Woodson comes from an NBA cloth. What did Indiana expect? He's going to be in the sauna. He's going to hang out. He's going to chill a little bit. I mean, that's just what it is. I mean, it's just, we're just not, he's not, he's, a, he's not a college full and, you know, full college guy. So look, let him do what he's going to do, man. He's got that program buzzing right now. I like it. Yeah. And I'll, I'll end on this. You're the only, I'm the only person that you're going to hear this from, Dan Dockett. Merry Christmas and stay in your lane, door dashing. <laughs> it's illinois it's illinois john henson the fighting illini are, are a really challenging team to figure out at times i'm wondering what you would give them for christmas it's a book called you don't need a title to be a leader by uh, mark sanborn um brad has been implying that leadership is lacking in that locker room um I think we get all these guys these books. We 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 tell them to read and we reconvene and, and figure out what they learn. Terrence Shannon Jr. is going to start. You know, we're going to start with him and we're going to go down the line. So I'm going to get them that book and hopefully someone steps up because I think that's the only thing they're missing is someone for them to follow. I think it, it's tough for it, it's tough with so many new guys for that one guy to step forward and be like, this is the way we're going to do things. I'm not sure Coleman Hawkins is is the has that kind of personality. He's a good dude. He's a very jovial guy. I'm not sure he's this alpha dominant. Hey, I need you guys to play this way in order for it to work. But all that being said, I'm getting Brad Underwood more specifically. I'm getting a present for Brad Underwood and I'm getting him some Dramamine for the roller coaster of emotions. <laughs> that is this Illinois basketball team. Because one day they'll play great and they'll beat the brakes off a Syracuse team or they'll beat Texas on a neutral floor in overtime. And then they'll turn around and then they'll struggle against Maryland, who's a good team. Or they'll struggle against Penn State at home, which Penn State's a good team, but you need to protect the crib. That's tough. Give my man Underwood some drama mean to sustain this emotional roller coaster that is a fine, fighting Illini. All right, I got one for, for, for Illinois here. Um, Instead of going out, if you're Brad Underwood and taking out your wife uh, for New Year's Eve this year, I want him to take out Matthew Meyer for, for New Year's Eve. I want them to go on a date together and, and, <laughs> and just kind of hug it out, hug it out, you know, figure out a way. Matthew Meyer, this is tough for Meyer because he's going from Scott Drew, who is the model of positivity, to Brad Underwood. <laughs> Who, who is just not, I mean, he's a negative Nancy, you know, that's what he is right at times. So it's been an adjustment. So I, I think they need date night, Meyer Underwood date night, just the two of them candlelit dinner where they can just hug it out. I, I don't feel bad for Matthew Meyer because Tar Heels, we really wanted him. And, and he's, you know, we didn't thought give him enough had NIL. Him. You didn't yeah. give him enough NIL. Yeah. And then he snubbed us, you know, Hey, he left for the bread. Hey, look, I don't, hey, listen, man, take him out to dinner and figure it out, man. Look, you could have been in Carolina. You know what I'm saying? Hey, look, we would have been a lot better. I like with him as well. So, hey, take the there's money. Something to be, there's something to be said, though. Like, he's better at Illinois percentage wise this season than he was last year. Yeah, like, yeah. he's shooting 35% from three. He's inconsistent. That's he's right. up and down. That's, that's the problem. They're up but and that's down. been his situation since he's been in college, really. Yes. Yes. Right. Right. You ever been to a really bad, like, uh, one of those HR enforced work outings where you have to do team building and you, like put blocks together and talk it out. Mm. Illinois needs one of those. They need like an intervention analyst to come into the locker room because that's the only thing holding them back. Yeah, That's the sure. only, only thing holding them back. So they need a team building day. I'm with you. I, like Underwood and Meyer should go to dinner on New Year's Eve for Underwood's wife. Let's get her something nice. Like a foster. Yeah. Whatever. You can enjoy it herself. But then for the rest of the hey, team. It'll be a good night for her not to be with Brad on New Year's Eve. <laughs> <laughs> his, wife will, his wife will went out. And then the other thing I would say is, to me, Jaden Epps is really Like, he plays with it himself. I think he, he came up huge at the Garden in that over Texas. So I would look for him to take on an even increased as the season goes on. We'll see what the Illini end up being. But, the Big Ten title race is going to be very interesting to monitor here, guys, because I think there's there's openness to it. Just because Purdue's the number one team in the country doesn't necessarily mean that they're 
outright going to win the Big Ten and Cruz. We'll see. All right, let's turn to the defending national champions here. Let's get to the Kansas Jayhawks. Jeff, you begin. I mean, this one's easy, right? Like, I think Kansas has everything, right? I mean, they got the maybe the best coach in the country. They got a terrific point guard now in, in Wani Harris, who's who stepped up in the offensive end a little bit. They got an elite shooter uh, and freshman in Grady Dick who can do more than just shoot it. Uh, Kevin McCullough is terrific as, as a glue guy who does everything well. Um, so what are they missing? Just consistency on the front line. Like, that's it. K.J. Adams, is he's been good. And, you know, they got three guys that, that are all different, that are all young. They're, none of them are going to be, you know, a, a, a Joel Embiid or anything close. They're not even going to be David McCormick in a way. But I think they can be better. If you remember, David McCormick wasn't very good for, like, up until almost the NCAA tournament last year. So they can be much better defensively in a way. Because they can switch everything with KJ Adams. He's the key to this team. They've got everything else. They can win another national title if they get any sort of consistency out of KJ Adams in the front court. I'm giving some appreciation to the most underappreciated guy in college basketball. In my mind, Wani Harris yeah. is a top three point guard in the truest sense of a point guard. And we don't have a ton of true point guards in, in the college game anymore. And he's that guy that holds them all together. Sure. They have Jalen Wilson. Sure. They have Grady Dick. Sure. They have a Kevin McCullough. That's a really, really good college role player, but what Kansas has that is better than pretty much everybody they're going to play against is a point guard that steadies the ship that is always consistent, that guards his butt off. Please. Great call. People outside of Kansas, give my man Dwan Harris the praise that he deserves and as a potential Bob Cousy award winner. I'm going to go. They need to somehow bench minutes. I'm giving, I want them to have get bench minutes for Christmas because the 305 on Ken Palm and bench minutes, you know, the, he's, he's trusting his starters and he's playing them heavy load. But I think down the stretch, even as you saw with Carolina last year, for example, guys may get banged up and those minutes are going to need to be kind of leveled down for them to be, I think, the best team they can possibly be because they are trending up. They're playing well. But if they cannot get some consistent play off the bench um, down the stretch, man, they could be banged up. The, the conference they're in is a tough conference. Every night's a battle. So, yeah, we need to get us some bench minutes for Christmas, man. So, somebody on the bench is, hey, can you just fill it in for a little bit? Hey, just keep it solid. Don't make them worse. That's all you do coming off the bench, being a career NBA bench guy. Don't just don't make it worse, and and, and they, they'll be okay. Well, I'm gonna give Grady Dick a cowboy hat because <laughs> I, I think he is what could lead Kansas, help lead Kansas to Houston, anyways, because he has just been sensational. He fits the program so well. He feels like a guy who's been with Kansas for three or four years. Yeah. When, when you watch him play, like yeah. legitimately feels that way. I'm giving Jalen Wilson an off day from leg day. Jalen Wilson, you don't Dude, have to, no kidding. That, that guy does not need a gym in his home. Like he's the one who doesn't need a home gym. He could mm -hmm. Jalen, go, you know, go get a back massage or go just take care of yourself for a day because you don't need a lift day. And then I'm giving Kansas a teleportation machine so that Yudoka Azabuki can show up for March Madness. Because if Azabuki was on this team, they'd win the national championship. Like if, they, if they had an elite postman, they, there's nothing holding them back. I think Jeff said it over the weekend. Pretty sure you said this, Jeff. Kansas has made you believe that they can repeat. Totally, totally, 100%. Absolutely. Pending matchups, pending matchups. Right. Yep. All right, let's turn to the team. We go from the defending national champions to the team that the field of 68 had as number one in the preseason. A team that reasserted themselves by going to Virginia and beating the Cavaliers. And, and, and not winning by one or two, but beating them by eight. It's the Houston Cougars. John Henson, lead us off. Um, I'm going to – is there any way – yeah, I'm going to go consistency. 
Um, I think consistency makes them a national championship front runner. They, they look shaky against St. Mary's, Oregon, Kent State. They lost to Alabama, played in some close games. And then they waltz into UVA, which, as we know, is a very tough place to play. And they dismantle a good UVA team. So let's just – can we get some consistency from them? And, and, and I think that makes them, you know, the best team in the country, in my opinion. I'm going to get football pads that they bring with them and they hand to the opposing team, right? Because anybody that Houston plays, they're going to out tough. Yeah. What Kelvin Sampson has done down there, like it doesn't look comfortable to play against the Cougs. And not only that, they have spectacular guard play. Sasser hasn't been what we thought Sasser was going to be. He's going to gain his footing, and you're probably going to see the best version of him in March, in April because Houston is that good and they have that many, that many pieces, but bring in shoulder pads, bring in bubble wrap for all I care. We got to get some protection for whoever they play because it is not comfortable to play the Cougs, the most physical team in college basketball. And if you go and win at Virginia during the Tony Bennett era, you got a bunch of tough dudes and that's significant. For me, it's all about health. It's all about health for Houston, right? I mean, that kind of held them back. Look at what Kelvin did last year without Marcus Sasser and Tremont Mark to get him as far as he did without those two. So Sasser obviously out for the year last year with the uh, the toe injury. This year he's been banged up with with multiple injuries. He's wearing goggles or glasses uh, up until the last game with an eye injury. I think the biggest thing that Kelvin Sampson and Houston needs here is just to stay healthy because if they can do that, there's no reason Houston can't cut down the nets in Houston this year. So bubble wrap for them too. Like they can use it for them and the other team. Yes. I'm, I'm with that. <laughs> for, for both teams. Yeah. Uh, I would say perimeter shooting. Perimeter shooting goes up and down for them. It, it's not great. And we all know what can happen in March. If you show up and you can't hit the broad side of a barn, you might be talented as hell but it could be two hours and all of a sudden your season's over because you simply could not make a shot. And then I, I would look at Marcus Sasser and Jamal Shedd and say, Hey, here's some hydrotherapy machines. Take the afternoon, those big, those big hydro machines, the ones that LeBron made famous. Henson was in them plenty. I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, those, those things, Hey, look, those things get you right, man. Uh, when I was in Cleveland, LeBron actually had one like in the, like when I got traded there, in the middle of the training room, literally like in the middle. You just, you know what I mean? So they, hey, maybe, they, yeah, maybe I should have gave them that gift too. I like that. You, you know like, what I, you know what I'd also like to give them air conditioning and Kelvin Sampson's doghouse because that seems to be a rotating endeavor. <laughs> Is that where Arsenal was last game? <laughs> I don't know, but I'm guessing so. I and mean, there's always somebody in there. So get some air conditioning in that doghouse. Heck yeah, absolutely. And Henson, by the way, I didn't even get to this. This is important. How much time do we have? We have 30 seconds. You like Cleveland, right? Tell Terrence you like Cleveland. Man, I live right next door to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. There's a nice Mexican spot on the water. I, I, I had a great apartment. on the. I could see the Cleveland Browns Stadium. I had a blast. But now, remember, I was coming from Milwaukee. I was coming from Milwaukee now. So and he was wearing shorts out there I, looking at a frozen like going lake from New York. It's like going from, like, Jersey to New York. You know what I'm saying? So it was uh, – I like Cleveland. Now. I like that. I like hearing that. There it is. <laughs> There's the Houston Cougars, some hydrotherapy, some three-point shooting. We'll see if the real Marcus Sass, the one that we have known, can keep on raising his game. Let's go to the Pac-12. Hey, we've given the Pac-12 a lot of you-know-what in recent years. It's been the butt of jokes. I'll tell you what. The Pac-12 gets credit for me right off the bat because you know what? They went 3-0 and against the SEC this past weekend. The top of the league has been better than, than one might have originally thought. Arizona mm -hmm. State's had a much better year than we would have thought. But we'll give out gifts to Arizona and UCLA. Let's start with the Wildcats, and it's only fitting that we begin with alum Jeffrey Goodman. I mean, just more trash talk from Kirk Risa. Like, as much as we can <laughs> possibly give them, keep talking, Kerr, because to me, I know a lot of people don't like it. I love it for college hoops. I like the 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 energy, the shit that because like in the NBA, it's really not there. I mean, other than like Pat Bev, right? Pat Bev talks more shit, but he's an but insane it's, person. It's contained in the NBA. Yeah. 
Like we need it in college. That's what college basketball is all about. The emotion. And, and again, I know Arizona got teed up uh, from their bench. I don't know if it was Balo or Kerr or both yeah. of them uh, at the end of the game against Tennessee. But to me, Kerr Creasa, like, I love you, man, because of what you bring that a lot of other guys don't. It's fun for the game. So bring it and keep bringing it and bring more of it. I am going to give them, if I, I, I don't want to get, I want to get it correct. It's, it's called Zeppelini. Now, that is a Lith- the Lithuanian national dish. And Azula Savannah. Good for you, John Henson. Well yes. done. Yes. The, I the, ate it. Hey, the, I had it. I can't okay. pronounce it, but I ate it when I was in Lithuania <laughs> having to cover those bald knuckleheads. Exactly. And and so Azula Savannah is the MVP of the team right now. They just beat Tennessee. They're rolling. Uh, simple. They're playing well. They deserve a little home-cooked meal via Lithuania. Azula Sabellis is from there. Hey, let's figure something out, man. Let's let's feast, man, for the holidays, man. They're playing. I love what they did against Tennessee. They're on the right track. You know what I'm getting, Arizona? I'm getting Tommy Lloyd a yearly (laughs) subscription to Babel. Because if you look at their roster, Azula Sabellis from Lithuania, Omar Balo, Mali, Kirk Risa, Estonia, Adama Ball, France. Like, it's a league of nations over here, boys. Right. Like, how in the world he's been able to recruit on a worldwide scale from different parts of the world? Like, he, he's got them from, you know, Australia. Then he got goes a lot of Eastern miles. Europe. ATO, a lot, a lot of miles of, jacked up. That's exactly right. We got to get my man a subscription so he can at least be serviceable in all these different languages. So he can ask for directions when he's going to get all these studs in France. He can ask for directions when he has to make a trip to Mali. He can ask for directions in Estonia. And even Lithuania, because there's a lot of big dudes that play really hard, a lot like Azulis Tubelis. Not as athletic, but there's a lot of them. So he, if he's going to continue to, to uh, recruit in the manner in which he's recruiting, the international way, he needs to be serviceable in about 30 different languages. Even Pele Larson is Swedish. Now, they all speak English over there, but like so many different players, so many different countries, so many different languages. Give my man a Babel subscription. All right. <laughs> You made me think of the old Rosetta Stone commercials. When That's you, right. You know, of, of translation and all that. You know what I would give? I'd give the whole Arizona team. I'd give it to all of us. Because, Goodman, I know you'd buy one and have it on your shelf. Kerr Kreisa is like the WWE superstar to college basketball. He is made to have an action figure. <laughs> he is. Put the headband <laughs> on. You got him in his jersey. Like that guy, put that guy in the ring. He is, he is something else. It's a villain. He's a villain. That's for sure. Yes. He embraces being a villain, which yeah. you have to love even more. He, he's got a, he's got a kind of confidence and kind of the way he carries himself and how he plays and what he does on the court, man. I, he kind of stands out. If you're not, if you watch the Arizona team, you kind of like gravitate towards him, man. So he's fun to watch. You ever, then- see, you ever seen that clip where they're just like, I just hate your face. It's like, yeah, I'll work on that. It's like, no, you can't. It's Kirk Reese. His face is stuck like that. And I'm giving Ballo and Tubelis stepbrothers movie. Oh, oh good. Nice. Life in Tucson. Those two could have a show about themselves because they, they are entertaining to watch and quite the dynamic duo. All right. Let's transition to UCLA. Nick Cronin's Bruins. They were the statement team a week ago, gentlemen. Let's begin with Terrence Oglesby. Guys, there hasn't been a team more impressive over the past week than UCLA. Uh, They're guarding what they did at Maryland uh, for a Kevin Willard team at Maryland that has been playing remarkably well. They beat the brakes off of them in College Park. And then they go up and follow that up with another really good performance. Like UCLA is playing better than anybody right now. So they are the second team that I'm giving a time machine to. Why? Because if you started the NCAA tournament right now, I'm picking UCLA to win the national championship. Much like Jeff Goodman, I knew you were coming with it. Much like <laughs> Jeff, much like Jeff Goodman uh, picked at the beginning of the season. Kudos to you. If they keep this up, we'll see. I don't know who in the world beats them. Yeah. I'm going to give them a Nintendo Switch 12-month online membership. Jalen Clark, after the Kentucky game, says, we just want to be happy, have a happy ride home, and play Super Smash Bros. They come to the East Coast. They beat Maryland. They beat Kentucky. Different time zone. 
So whatever they're doing is working. Let's get them another. Let's, let's extend them. I know the NIL is different now. Kids can do, you know, they can afford this type of stuff. But when I was in school, that would have been a nice little thoughtful gift. So that's what I'm giving UCLA. They're playing well. Nothing bad to say about them. Hey, was did Harrison Barnes beat your ass in Super Smash Brothers? Be honest. Harrison was we were Harrison wasn't playing video games. Harrison was, you know. Oh, he did. You're wrong. I hung see, out with him for a day. See, he that's the thing. He never showed us the video game side. I saw really? the saxophone, you know. Wow. Buttoned up side, you know. But as we got older, you know, definitely a little more. But yeah, I never saw him video. I never saw him play video games. Never did. He taught me how to play Super Smash Brothers. I'm going right, to shoot him a text and say, wow, you were play Super Smash Bros? Like, I He's thought, holding out. He was holding out. Yeah, I tell was him, at his wedding. Him. Like, I'm like, yo, I thought I was yeah. your guy, you know. So All right, let, let's get back on track. UCLA. Uh, UCLA, to me, it's it's depth. It's It's somebody off the bench. It's twofold. To me, it, depth is the number one. They got David Singleton, who every time he shoots the ball, by the way, I think it's going in. Every single time. Uh, so Singleton is really good off the bench as a shooter, but they need one more dude. One more dude. and Maybe it's Dylan Andrews. I don't know. And then the other thing is for Adam Boner to stay out of foul trouble because he's averaging like three and a half fouls a game, and he plays like 18, 19 minutes. So he's got to stay out of foul trouble, especially because of my first deal, which is their lack of depth. So Amari Bailey, for me, I would give him confidence on the offensive end of the floor. He's playing good minutes, mm -hmm. but he's had three straight performances where he's really been a non-factor offensively. So I think it's really the power of the freshman. That's the gift that that I would give you, CLA, is if is if I could go down the chimney and say to Adam Bona and Amari Bailey, you have it in you to make this team Final Four worthy. You guys just have to have the confidence there because your coach certainly has. Mick Cronin has never talked more highly about freshmen than he has talked about this freshman class. I mean, he he's been so high on them. And then I would give Mick Cronin a a tanning booth trip. I just want to see what Mick would look we'll like. Find out where Tom Cruise lives in Los Angeles. Just ask him where Tom Crean goes. <laughs> yeah, but but T.O., the L.A. sun doesn't work for him. Like, it's not powerful enough. Don't I don't think he sees it. I don't think he sees it. I agree with that. That's very true. Very true. He probably doesn't. And I would send him some Skyline Chili because I know he likes it, and he doesn't get a dose of it in Los Angeles. I'd send him some Skyline Chili. i just want to see what Mick would look like upon getting out of a tanning booth. And you're right. He can ask who? I give him Xanax to calm him down, Mick, on the sideline. <laughs> that was great. There, there are the UCLA Bruins. All right, we've done the Pac-12. Let's turn to the SEC. Let's turn to the Arkansas Razorbacks. Now, I'm going to give you guys all a moment here as we hit the four minutes on the clock. The, the gift that I would give them is like what you just said. I'd give them some Xanax or, or some Dramamine too, because the only thing that might be holding them back is sometimes how hard they play actually goes against them. That's the only thing. Like sometimes they actually can hurt themselves because I think they measure up with just about anybody. Mm. Uh, in Maui, they would have advanced the championship game if Musk didn't get all fired up with the refs and things didn't go, go down the tube. And then along those lines, just making sure that you take high percentage shots. That's the one thing. When you look at some of their shooting, there are some numbers. I mean, uh, Devo Davis has has actually really struggled struggled from three this season, guys. He's he has not shot the butt basketball well. He's a key guy for them. They a left factor guy. They need to get him going. Let's see what you guys are giving the Razorbacks. We begin with Jeff. I, you know, this has been the hardest one for me. I mean, obviously, the easy answer is just experience. Like, fast forward and give them experience in big games in the SEC. I, I think they played a fairly um, underwhelming non-conference schedule for the most part. So I, I just want to give them, you know, reps playing against good teams in the SEC uh, because I think that's all they need. Honestly, they just need that. I was actually going to go along the same lines there with uh, Nick Smith giving him more reps because he was out for the first part of the season with an injury and getting him in on the floor and working with the, with 
his talented teammates, all those athletes around the perimeter, everything like they, they divvy the ball up. They spread it around. That's an unselfish bunch. Must has got them moving the basketball. If you look on Kim Palm, they're only go-to guys, Jalen Graham. He's only playing 12% of the minutes. So like their ability to sp spread it out, pass the ball, uh, they're an unselfish bunch. Now Nick Smith needs to get more repetition with his guys. And I think with more repetition, his percentages are going to jump as well. I'm going to give them, I mean, ESPN likes making money. They like viewership. They need more TV games. You got Ricky Council, Nick Smith Jr., Anthony Black, to me, is probably the arguably one of the best backcourts in the country. Two future pros, must-see TV. Um, they scored 56 to 76 points against Bradley. Um, with them being so young, they play a very mature, mistake-free kind of game. Um, they combined for, what, four turnovers and shot 18 of 33 from the field last game. I mean, these guys are must-see TV. Can we, can we get them on? Can we get them on like a primetime slot? You know what I'm saying? That that'd be nice. You know, so maybe because it's the Arkansas and the Jersey, but I feel like if these guys had some type of blue blood across their chest, yeah, if they had Kentucky two, across times, their jersey, we yeah, we see them two, three them times a week. You know, so yeah. we need to get them more TV games, man. If they had Carolina on their chest, they'd be on TV every day. Doesn't matter how bad the team's exactly. playing, right, John? Exactly. I, I agree. I mean, these guys are people. <laughs> people don't really know them now, but I mean, these guys are. Two of the guys are probably going to go top 10 in the draft. Two top 10 guards is but scary. I'll, but I'll say this. All right, like, like you want them to be on TV. North Dakota State, Fordham, South Dakota State, Louisville stinks. They ended up playing Creighton and San Diego State in, in the event. And yeah. since they got back, Troy, San Jose State, UNC Greensboro, Oklahoma, Bradley. Like what games do you want to see them against? I, I would just say, look, man, throw them on a little Saturday 2 p.m. precursor to the to the uh, CBS Classic, man. Like just Gotta get them on people, the man. Got to play people. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I mean, if you're if you're playing doormats, they're not going to put you on the prime yeah. slots. They're not. We're not going to see them. I mean, they got – they're at LSU Wednesday, December 28th. They're home to Missouri January 4th. They're at Auburn Jan 7. And then Jan 11, folks, mark your calendars now. Mark your calendars now in Fayetteville, Alabama, at Arkansas. January the 11th, which is where we go next – the Alabama Crimson Tide, who have been, frankly, guys, I thought that they would be good. I, I didn't think that they would be where they are right now. They've been one of the surprising teams for just how great they've been, even though they lost to, to Gonzaga. Gonzaga's gotten better. Jeff Goodman, what are you giving the Alabama Crimson Tide for Christmas? I mean, I, I would just give them, uh, like, like, take care of the ball. Like, I don't know what I'd give them for that. Like, you guys can help me. Yeah. What, what, do you, what do you give them? Just, hey, it's carry the ball everywhere. Sleep with it. Yeah. Right? Like, every everybody in that team, you're, yeah. you're carrying it. You know, you guys probably had that happen. T.O. must have. At some point in his career, well, some he coach up. must have given him the ball and said, hey. Uh, man, Jeff, like, Jeff T.O. had no problems hanging on to the ball. It was getting rid of it was the problem. Because yeah. <laughs> I was shooting it. Hey, you can't turn it over if you shoot it. That's you know what I mean? Good. That was Very my good. strategy whenever I play. Can't turn it over if you shoot it. They just they're, – they're they're up and down, and they've got to take care of the, the ball. Their guards uh, – obviously, Jaden Bradley's a freshman, but Mark Sears and, and Quinterly – um, and, and really even Brandon Miller, who's been awesome, like my favorite mm -hmm. freshman in the country, but you, you still can't be loose with the ball. Right. And, and that's their biggest Achilles heel. And that's going to ultimately determine whether Alabama makes a, a deep tournament run or not, whether they can take care of the basketball. I'm going to go give them some emergency vitamin C packs. There's been a little illness going around that team. Um, they had a film session on the court spread out yesterday. I wonder how that looked. That's interesting. He said everyone hasn't been feeling great, but they'll be ready to play. Let's get them a little vitamin C in their regimen on that training table. And, uh, you know, let's, let's get healthy, man. Let's, let's not let this illness kind of take over. They have a big game coming up. When's the last time we were excited about an elemental Arkansas non football game? So, uh, yeah, let's get them some let's, – let's, let's, let's get healthy. Let's, let's get, you know, let's, let's get healthy. Let's bundle up. Let's, let's stay safe. And it's kind of the right time to get sick, too, because you got eight games. After you play Jackson State, you're going to win that game. They're favored by 30 on yeah. Kempom, so they're going to win that game. It's kind of the right time to get sick so you can get your immune system hot for conference play, so you should be right. good. I right. think that's a positive. Uh, I'm, I'm getting them uh, an ADT security system because of all the theft that's been happening. So <laughs> there you go, Jeff Goodman. ADT security. 
Uh, they just, that's, that's the thing. And whenever you play that style of basketball, it, it, you're going to turn the ball over. I, I think that's a big portion of it. Uh, the crazy part is, is they're not forcing a ton of turnovers. So they're giving it up on 22% of their possessions and they're only, you know, forcing turnovers on 15% of their defensive possessions. So it's kind of a juxtaposition there. Like you have to try to even that out a little bit. So if you're going to turn it over a lot, you better force a lot. If you're not going to turn it, you know what I mean? So there has to be some give somewhere there. Uh, it, this Alabama team has been about as fun to watch over the past few years as any team uh, in recent memory, because Nate Oates, that style, the way they shoot it, the way they pass, the way they move, like it's a lot of fun to watch. It's just a matter of uh, can you take care of the ball when things get tight? And is Javon Quinterly going to give the ball up uh, at the end of the game is also a big question for me. Yeah. Very true. Well, selfishly, I would like to get on a 50 50- a 15 day cafeteria plan in Tuscaloosa because when we had Brandon Miller on the show last week, he said he eats six or seven times a day he did, and that the food is really good down there. Well, you know what the other thing I would give out to Alabama, I would give Nick Saban a cup of Christmas joy and tell, and tell Nick in that Christmas joy, Nick, when you're at the podium next, talk up Alabama basketball because 75% of your fan base doesn't even know basketball exists. <laughs> but wake up the basketball fans because this Crimson Tide team has a legitimate shot to make a Final Four run and be in that class. And frankly, Nick, you didn't make the Final Four this year, so you should try to help your fans understand who the Final Four team could be in Tuscaloosa. That's what I'm giving Coach Saban. It's all in all this like that. wars with Stoops and Cal and the. This is a chance, Nick, for you to unify unify Alabama because Kentucky can't unify themselves for, from the football basketball school standpoint, which is where we turn next, the Kentucky Wildcats. I'll tell you what, guys, Santa's thinking about Kentucky right now. Whether they're naughty or nice, will <laughs> Slay pull into Lexington, Terrence Oglesby? Tell you what, that was a hell of a transition. I'm just going to throw <laughs> that in there. Very well done, John Fanta. Uh, I'm going to send, as a Christmas present, John Beeline down to Kentucky. Oh, no, you stole mine. No shit. Are you kidding me? Swear to God. Swear to God. (laughs) Swear to God, John Beeline to John. Wow. Wow. Like, like how random is that that you stole mine? That's wild. Yeah. Swear to God. Holy hey, how shit. about that? The, their roster fits that two guard system perfectly. Yes. And you're going to be able to space it out with I had those the, guards I that they I had. I had the best present ever, and that no chance you guys were going to have it. And I'm, it's John Beeline to Lexington. I, I, am, I, am, I am going to say that I was part of the John Beeline experiment in Cleveland, and I am not a fan. But keep going. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, well, hey, take out, take, hey, take the equation out of. First of all, and, and we'll have on a on a future after dark. <laughs> on a future after dark, we'll go into how I, I believe first practice he was going through like footwork uh, drills with you. I mean, guys. he was telling Jordan Clarkson, one of the best, if not the best, six men of the year scorers off the bench, how to do a layup as a five year <laughs> pro on a version making a hundred million. I mean, it was yeah. rough out there. But yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll go. We'll, we'll transition back. We'll talk about that sometime. Listen, he, he, he's not an NBA guy. All right, no John Beeline right no now is consulting for the Detroit Pistons. He coached Cleveland. Obviously, we know that didn't work out. He did not belong in the NBA. But but perfect I, for Keo, Yes, he's perfect for what John Calipari needs, which is figure your damn offense out because it it blows right now. John Beeline is an offensive mastermind, and he was in college, right, Tio? Absolutely right. And that two guard system that he preached for so long, you look at Kentucky's roster, that's where it came from for me. I, I don't know what he was doing. <laughs> like, you can't yeah. teach Jordan Clarkson off a hundred million dollar contract, how to shoot a layup. That's, that's, that's blasphemy like, almost. You know, he, he was telling inside, he's like, Hey, look, use your inside hand. I said, listen, coach, I love you, but look, he's averaging 20 off the bench. I think. Yeah. Let that man, let that man flourish. Let that, <laughs> sometimes you just, the best thing NBA guys do sometimes just get the hell out of the way. Uh, it, it goes from college being a coach's league to pros being a player's league. It, 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 fly, it flips egos. It's overnight. Egos. Yeah, too many egos. You got to let those guys live. But you look at Severe Wheeler, he would thrive in something like that. Casey Wallace, Antonio Reeves, CJ Frederick needs some help, guys. Like, I know he's our guy, but like, he needs shots facilitated for him. He thrives off ball movement. That two guard offense 
would really help Kentucky uh, kind of be able to create some more things because right now dribble drive ain't working because people are just switching underneath and they're keeping guys out of the paint and it's killing closeouts. And what that means is they don't have to close out. The defenses don't have to close out and guys are struggling. So John Beeline makes a trip down to Lexington <laughs> and helps them out. Amazing. Amazing oh. that, that, that great <laughs> guys think alike on that one, although Henson oh. does not agree. I, I am going to go with an all staff sports psychologist. Um, they're shooting 68% from the free throw line, and they don't have much room for error and misses. And they're still, you know, they're a developing team. Free throws are important for them. Um, it can hurt them not a stretch in big games, as it did kind of UCLA. They could have kind of got a little instant a little closer, and they couldn't kind of get close enough. So let's get them all staff sports psychologist because I think it's all mental. And uh, let's figure out what's going on. You know, 68% for a team full of guards that are pretty good is, is not good. I'm going to actually do something here. I'm going to take the password that Louisville couldn't get into the transfer portal. I'm going to take it from Kentucky and give it to Louisville and deny access of all portal and recruiting access for a month for the Kentucky staff right now. You know why? Get in the film room, look at X's and O's, and you know what else I'm going to hand Cal? Remember the old toys in the 90s? The Boppets. Oh, oh yeah. Remember Boppet? Yeah. Cal needs a Boppet for tweaking. <laughs> He's got the tweak coming, man. The tweak is a coming. Remember the Boppet? The Boppet is basically the tweak toy. Yep. No. I mean, that's, I like it. I like it. Cal, I like that's it. What Cal needs, baby. That and he's referencing the tweak, right? He's talking about playing Chris Livingston a little bit more and pulling mm -hmm. back on Jacob Toppin. The tweak is coming, folks. The new year's coming, and just like that, Cal's tweaking. Here we Cal's go. <laughs> tweaking, twerking, whatever he's doing. I would not. I would not like to see Cal twerking. <laughs> maybe, maybe some tweaking. No I, twerking. No, I. I don't want to see him twerking. <laughs> And you just got some really weird bedroom images in my head of time. <laughs> All right. Um, they can cut that out. Let's go to Gonzaga. <laughs> Let's go to Gonzaga. What do the Zags need for Christmas, John Henson? No, this was tough for me because, I, you know, I, I said better guard play. Malachi Smith, Nolan Hickman. Um, they were turning that thing over early. As we saw – against Alabama when they play well, they don't turn the ball over. Everything kind of came together from Drew Timmy to the guard play. They look tough to beat. And it was kind of their last game before they can, before they kind of, before they go back to their conference and they whoop everybody and then they go into the tournament as a top seed. So that was good to see from them. Um, and a better guard play, if I could wrap that up. Yeah. We, we harped on it all year, obviously. So, you know, that's what, if I could give them for Christmas, I, I, that's what I would do. Jeff? Uh, I want Julian Strother to be an MFer. That's what I want. I want him to be a killer and, and, and want to take over games. I think he's got the ability. Yes. I just don't know if he's got the mentality. I know everybody's going to talk about their guard play, and, and that's true. But, like, if Nolan Hickman is solid and Timmy and Strother are killers, yes. that could get, get him to the Final Four. I just think they need a, a dude. And, and Strother is the guy that I think could do it and should be doing it every night, averaging 18 a game, not just in the WCC. Uh, I'm, I'm going to get Gonzaga uh, to get Drew Timmy a pension plan because I feel like he's been there for freaking ever. <laughs> like th th that's the big one for me. If it, he's like the new Greg Paulus, and that's how that's how it was when I was growing up. It felt like Greg was there forever. Now Drew Timmy has been there forever, and I, I'm pretty sure if he could figure out a way to have more seasons of eligibility, he'd use them. So uh, that's a big thing. Drew Drew Timmy, obviously, he's been terrific. Those guards, uh, I think they've been serviceable. If you look down at their stats, like not terrible guys. Like even Malachi Smith, who doesn't play a huge chunk of minutes, right at 21-ish minutes a game. Like his percentages are really good. 50 from three, 49 from two. Like they're starting to get some production from those guards. They just don't have that electricity that they've had prior and what do we talk about, guys? At the end of games, you got to have a tough shot, Mike. Right? A, a guy that can create things when there's nothing left. And you saw it last year with Caleb Love. You saw it last year, Ochai Abaji. He had to create create some things. Like teams that have those guys are guys that are teams that do well in the NCAA tournament. Miami makes an Elite Eight run because of Isaiah Wong. Caleb Love, they make the Final Four. Like who's that guy for Gonzaga? 
that's going to be huge. That's going to be huge. Drew Timmy, I give you some Dos Equis because I know it's your favorite beer. Merry Christmas. <laughs> I'm with Jeff on Julian Strother because he was a killer in the win over Xavier, came up big with, with some shots. He just needs to be that guy for them game in and game out. We often do talk about guard play in this sport, but I would argue this. If you have great play at the two, three, four, five, it makes the one shot, it makes the one's job so much easier. And you can be a final four team if you don't have outstanding point guard play, but you have good shot making at the other spots. And that's where Strother opens things up for Gonzaga. Totally opens things up for them. And as we finish up on the Zags a little bit earlier than expected, that's what we would give them for Christmas. All right, let's turn to the Big East. Let's go to UConn. UConn, here's what I'm giving Dan Hurley. I'm giving Dan Hurley a brand spanking new Sharpie marker so that he can update his coach your guys <laughs> on his wrist. He needs a new Sharpie to refresh that ahead of Big East play, and he definitely needs it before December 31st because on New Year's Eve, he's going to be spending his New Year's Eve at the Sintod Center in a hostile atmosphere against Sean Miller. You need to mark down coach your guys, Danny. Get a new Sharpie for Christmas. Goodman, what are you giving UConn? A reality show. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I mean, think about it. Like, how great would it be? And I'm, I don't think I'm giving it to UConn. I think I'm giving it to the world. The college basketball world needs a reality show with Dan Hurley. And Andrea Hurley has to be a part of this, too. The whole Hurley family, UConn, all of it. I mean, my first inclination was to give him a better number one fan than, than Rob Doster. But we need we need a reality show. Doster or Douster? Douster, Doster, uh, what, whatever we want to call it. Like them. cameos from Calhoun, right? Like oh, 100%. I have that written down too. We need more of Jim Calhoun. We haven't seen a lot of Jim Calhoun since he retired from his D3 head coaching job down the road in West Hartford. I haven't, you know, I wanted him out there in Portland, Oregon, hanging out cuz Calhoun and Hurley together Holy shit. I mean, <laughs> you're talking about two of the best personalities this sport has ever seen, and they're both pretty damn unfiltered, too. <laughs> I, I would go, can we get, by the way, Dan Hurt, you know, my coach of the year pick. Um, you know, Nash, can we get some national media attention? Um, I feel like they're the most non-covered like top team in, I've ever seen as of late. They got victories over power conference, conference foes, Oregon, Alabama, Iowa State, Oklahoma State, Florida, now Butler. UVA loses. Purdue barely beats um, Davidson. Like, can we get some, someone please make a call and say, hey, look, can you guys talk about this team? You know, well, hey, that's, that's hey well, I was about to say. We <laughs> I'm going to say this though. I'll say this to you, John. You talk about broadcast exposure. I, mm -hmm. I'll, I've got to fit this in here. Okay. Yeah. I, I know I do games for FS1, and UConn in January and February will be on big broadcast TV more than any team in the country. Perfect. Not, hey, look, this already on Fox every Saturday. Gift received. You know what I'm saying? Already. Look, perfect. Yeah. Yep. All right, well, I, the, I, the I, problem is, too, a lot of the biggest games in November, ESPN. December are on ESPN, and, and UConn's uh, a Big East team that, that is not an ESPN program so yep. i think that hurts him early yeah all right so i i I, get, I have about a minute left and i'm going to give danny hurley and his staff the gift that'll keep on giving for a long time and that's a restraining order from one rob doster <laughs> because once they continue to win we're not going to hear the end of it they got to keep him away from the program he's poison to this you program. i mean he could honestly screw up this whole season i'm, I'm going to go ahead and yeah, I'm going to throw it all on that would be Rob cool. Doster. <laughs> now, wait, Goodman, like, Henson says the media coverage for UConn. That's not good for us either, because if Rob hears this. Oh, oh it's good. A restraining order. A, a restraining order is or what we need. It's fun. Is, it, is he towing the line, though, Jeff? You're good at measuring this. Yeah, he's been fine. He's been fine. They're number one or two in the country. They deserve, like Henson yeah. says, plenty of praise, plenty of accolades and attention. And now the biggest thing is how Dan Hurley can handle 
all of this going forward and the players. Briefly, because we haven't seen it in several years, Jeff, how big is it for college basketball if UConn goes on a crazy run? I mean, big, but like, I don't, UConn's not one of those teams to me. Now, it's the Northeast team that, that holds, especially with Villanova struggling right now. Uh, I think it'll help, but no, they're not Carolina or Duke. They're not those teams again. And part of it is no disrespect to Fox, but it's true. They're not on ESPN every night come January, February. Uh, They're they're just, they don't have that same juice and they never have that Duke, that Kentucky, that Carolina have had. All right, let's turn to Creighton. Four minutes on the clock. Man, it was looking real nice. And now it's not. <laughs> Go ahead, Hanson. Um, I'm gonna. Can we get a protective bubble for Colt Renner? <laughs> because without this guy, they're day. You know, they're day and night. They need to protect him at all costs. Put him in a bubble. Put him in a humidifier in the room. He was had an illness against Marquette. Do something to get this guy. Make sure they have this guy available because without him, they look like a different team. And I, I don't think anyone realized that that be that big of a difference without him but yeah can we get him some type of protective you know that movie the bubble boy or bubble man we need him to be in that type of setting like when he goes into the gym we unzip and we let him walk onto the court you know so (laughs) that's what we need from him that's what i was going i I was going to go that direction too a healthy colic brenner like everything they do defensively funnels right into a to a shot blocking five and with him injured, it really damp- it really dampens their effect defensively. And that's a big thing. Now, offensively, they also have their issues. But a lot of times, if they're able to get stops and get out and run, and a lot of those stops are a result of Colt Brenner being able to affect so many shots, and then they can hit an outlet and get going, like their offensive struggle. Now, I realize he played in, what, what is it, nine games? So three of those losses he was there for. So, like, let's not be naive to that fact. But, but he wasn't healthy, healthy. healthy. You yeah. got to understand what he has, and I, I, I can't say exactly what he has, mm-hmm. uh, but you can kind of figure it out from what I'm saying right now. Yeah. Affected him before yeah. that he came off the floor and couldn't play. So those for, those games leading up to when, when he uh, took time, you know, that Nebraska game, he was affected by what has – the illness that has kept him off the court since. Right. They, they need to turn back the clock. That's what they need, some sort of machine that can turn back the clock to December 1st yep. when they can have a healthy Ryan Kalkbrenner. Maybe they lose that game against Texas, and if they do, you were there, John. No shame in that one. But the start of the swoon was Nebraska, BYU, Arizona State, Marquette. With a healthy Ryan Kalkbrenner, they at least split those four. I don't even think they played well at Texas. They didn't play well. They, they shot the ball horribly in that game. And, and the game was intense, and Texas had something to do with that. There's no question about it. But I'll tell you what, Greg McDermott needs a day of relaxation. He needs to let go to play Arizona. golf. Let him play. He, he loves just, golf. He needs a spa day. Yeah, he let him play golf, golf in Phoenix. Yeah, with, with Duck. He yeah. needs a day with his son. Yeah. Like they, To me, guys – the whole Creighton team needs a motivational talk of let the main thing be the main thing. Mm. You know, you I love can, that. You can sense that there's some other things happening with that group. And I'll give you guys a story briefly. I'm at Creighton at Texas. I'm sitting next to a scout in press row. And the scout, I didn't say anything to the scout. All I hear him say about halfway through the game is this isn't a team anymore. That hurts. Yeah, they're playing and, for themselves. They're playing goes, for themselves. And he goes, and I don't want anybody who's going to do that. Yeah. So that's the thing with Creighton. Like, they you are know, the – You know what they need, too? You know what they need? Which is crazy that we said this, but for, for the last two years now, they need another shooter. Like, they just yeah. don't have shooting on this team. It's not a typical Greg McDermott team, right? Like, Shireman came in and, and has given him some three-point shooting, but a lot of these guys are not great shooters, and that's what we thought of at Creighton. For you. Yeah, do, you rem- do you remember after we talked about the loss to Texas? I was like, this is a game because they played, they made Creighton speed up so much. And I know we're out of time, Dagan. I'm just going to keep talking. But like, uh, 
like I, after that game was over, I was like, Texas made them play in such a way that this could screw them up for another game or two. Yeah. And sometimes when things snowball and they guys get playing too fast, they get frustrated with each other. But I love your your point, John, about keeping the main thing the main thing because there's a lot of things happening in college basketball right now, and if guys get irritated, those irritations can be uh, exponentially worse simply because there's other factors involved, not just not playing well. So it, it's it, they're in a tough spot. They're in a tough spot. Jeff, to your point, Creighton's athleticism and playmaking is on point when it's on, but shooting isn't something that they have game to game. And I don't know if there's an exact solution for that. So, cause they're getting high percentage shots at times. They're not falling. So it's, they, they could really use a time machine. It's, it's been a tough go to, to think that that team could ever lose six games in a row is wild. And that is exactly what has occurred. All right. Last but not least, the best child of them all in college basketball. When he goes down his steps in West Lafayette, on Christmas morning, he should see a train with cars around his tree, gifts <laughs> everywhere. I'm not sure what his favorite beverage is. He should see that too. He should even have some just for men planted by Santa overnight. So when he wakes up, he feels like he's 28 again. Matt Painter and the Purdue Boilermakers are at the top of the nice list in college basketball. Jeff Goodman, tell us their gifts. I mean, like, I don't even know. I mean, with, with Purdue, it's so hard. I mean, I just want to give Zach Eady a ton of presents. I want to give him a hockey stick and a baseball glove because that's what the dude grew up playing. And I want to give him, I talked to his mother, Julia. Um, and what she said was the hardest thing for this dude, he wears size 20 shoes. Hey, and not yeah. He can't find them. He can't yeah. even Phil Knight. They, they, was... they won They won the PK-85, and he asked Phil Knight afterwards, he was like, hey, do you think I can get – you have any extras of, of, of what the team got? Because I, you, they were out of them. I can't get what my teammates get. Phil Knight, come on, man. This guy's the best player in the country right now. Get him whatever. Give him his own sneaker right now. He's 7'4". Give him his own custom shoe. Period. I don't Kyrie, you got rid of him. Get give give it to Zach Eady. Hey, you, you stole my uh, I stole your beeline. You stole my uh Zach Eady one. And I wasn't like, even going there. I did it like as I'm thinking. Thanks, man. Uh <laughs> that was mine. And I can't remember who wrote the article. Who was it that wrote that article about Zach Eady? His mother told me he's the athletic, I think. Yeah, the athletic wrote mm -hmm. it, and he has this very specific uh, type of shoe yeah. that and he cool. likes. And he because he's so big, like and big guys and feet, like yeah. serious issue, especially not like not your size, John, but like the the, the mega dudes, like super yeah, dudes. Yeah, I'm I'm like, 15, and and 15 is like right at the cutoff. It's where it gets tricky, you know. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, 15. I'm, I'm happy. I, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm 15 and it sucks. Yeah, like, but we can we we can still get it, you know, yeah. make it work. Yep. Yeah, but but get get my man some shoes. I mean, that's tough all the way around. Like big men and feet. Like you've seen it throughout the course of history. Like Yao Ming. Like guys have a hard time with if once they find a pair of shoes that fits them. Like you got to keep feeding those guys that particular kind of shoes, but. Uh, man, how, how, how could you not be thrilled if you're Matt Painter with how this season has evolved with freshmen playing well, shooting the basketball at a high clip, like Matt Painter, man, the, he just continues to get it done. It's, it's really unbelievable. I couldn't find much, you know, what they needed. It was tough per se to give them a gift, but I guess defensive rebounding, they're giving up um, on all boards, 32% of their opponent's shots, 297th in the nation. I guess that's what we could give them, but that would just be making the rich richer and nobody's perfect. If they sort that, if they tie that down, it could get ugly, uglier than it already is. So let's give them some defensive rebounding, but just a sprinkle though, just a little small stocking stuffer of defensive rebounding and they're good to go. Well, I, I would give Edie anything and everything in the world because he is the gift to college basketball. And I would also give Matt Painter a mute button that Tony Reale has on Around the Horn because he deserves it. 
for every freaking time oh. I still hear that he can't coach in March and that his teams don't get better and all this crap. Do you not think that Braden Smith and Fletcher Lawyer are going to continue to evolve, are going to continue to get better? The key to making the run in the NCAA tournament is to keep making the NCAA tournament. Okay? It's going to happen. We know that they had a generational loss to St. Peter's, but it would be, wouldn't it be ironic that the year following that wild loss to St. Peter's, that with a team that we all thought would take a significant step back, that this is the year that they actually make it. That's kind of how college troops go sometimes, Jeff. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Um, yeah, no, you're, you're right. I mean, this is, this Purdue team is, is so much fun to watch. Um, you know, and, and Zach Eady has, has been watching his development has been the coolest thing for me, watching him get better every year. They've got a, I was thinking about getting him a Lamborghini because they've got a bunch of old reliable cars in their, in their garage. Right. Like they've got this uh, F three fifty that is Zach Eady. And then they've got a bunch of really nice Toyotas mm. that, that do their job. They could use their, one more athletic wing. One right. more big athletic wing. That's, that's what you what would I'm going really at. give them. If you were going to give them some, Matt Painter something, that's what you would give him. Well, that's what I'm referring to exactly right there, Jeff. I get him a Lamborghini because Jaden Ivey was a Lamborghini. But right? you don't even need There Jay are no Ivey. more Lam- there are no, no, no more Lamborghini. Jay Jay Ivey. Yeah. You, just, you want a, a, an athletic wing that, honestly, a 3 and D athletic wing. Yes, exactly. Like, I think of a guy like Mikhail Bridges. I bet, like, like, like I get, I think of a guy like that. They need a three and D wing. You're exact because if you get a Lamborghini, sometimes we saw that we saw that last year. It, how it, that works? It can upset the rest of the garage. It did. It, did. it can upset the the cars. No, the cars, <laughs> no. The cars, no. The emotional the cars. volatility of John Fanta's garage. They yes. know. They know it, what's going on. Yeah, look, look, we had so not a, so not a Lamborghini, but more so like a like a, a really nice Mercedes. Sure, yeah. Yeah, AMG. Nice. We'll go AMG. We'll get them nice oh, AMG, that? right? Guys, we'll you AMG. guys can relate this. We and had. So what was your favorite car you've ever? The first car you ever bought was what? A uh, Range Rover. All right, all right. Your favorite car you ever bought? You know, my favorite car I ever bought. I'm gonna have to go. The Mercedes Maybach. I had that in Milwaukee. Uh, oh my god. Yeah, I don't know what a Mercedes Maybach is. It's a it's a large, nice luxury vehicle, and it was perfect because I was a, I'm I'm taller, so a lot of times cars are small. This car is big. I'm gonna call it sexy because I'm a car guy, and it got me where I needed. <laughs> it is a sexy go. car. Yeah, it's a big sexy car, and and so that was my favorite kind of vehicle, I would say. And they Mercedes actually made a more affordable. Because the other ones used to cost way more than they cost now. So I love the up. fact I'm that you just referred to a Maybach. Go look it up. Go look it up. You just referred to a Maybach as affordable. Hey, the Mercedes Maybach. Hey, you know, you know, in the police academy, when he when Two Tall Jones ripped the front seat out of the car so he could drive it, that might be before your time, John. But you don't have to do that in a Maybach because yeah. that is basically a limousine with four seats. Mm. They are huge and they are yep. beautiful. And Terrence, by the way, drives a Tesla. So that's right. That's right. That's it's right. a nice one. Hey, I'm, 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 I'm starting to feel like I'm going to have to talk to you off air about the test. I'm I'm, da- I'm, da- I'm trying to figure out what, it, what what I want to do, man. I was reading the article about how the charging stations are lacking behind, man. So we might not be electric in America. It's, it's, it's They're great. great. Now yeah. it works perfect. Yeah. Okay. We'll talk all right. It. We've broken down all 16 teams. So in the holiday spirit, I have written college basketballs twas the night before christmas there we go i knew you were going to do something like this fanta i was wondering if you were going to sing again i'm not going to sing this i'm just going to read you the poem it's it's not long okay but i think it gets the points across enjoy college basketball (laughs) twas the night before christmas and all through the house not a creature was stirring not even a mouse the boilers were rolling and rolling ahead while visions of offense filled John Calipari's head. Shire and Duke, they're rolling too. Watch out for those Hurleys and Arkansas. Woo. Goodman came down the chimney and he made Christmas special. And if Dalster keeps putting mayo on his steak, he's going straight to hell. <laughs> Merry Christmas from all of us at the Field of 68. We wish you a happy.